Somebody cue up that Clash song, Should I Stay or Should I Go? Because today what we're talking about is one of the two big-name guys the New York Rangers acquired at this year's NHL trade deadline. Of course, you know who it is from the title, from the thumbnail, etc. We're talking today about former Chicago Blackhawks legend, or I guess you could say he's currently a legend, but formerly a player on that team, Patrick Kane and whether or not his future truly does align with the New York Rangers. Now, of course, there was the other guy, Vladimir Tarasenko, that was also acquired too, and to their credit, they're both playing pretty all right with New York. Take a look at the point production over here. You can see that Patrick Kane has 10 points in 16 games with the Rangers. Vladimir Tarasenko has 16 points in 26 games. So none of them are going out there and producing at 80, 90, 100 point plus season projection, but they were two additions onto a top six that was already pretty good on a Rangers team that was already good too. So expecting anybody to get added on and have that extended point production isn't really all too realistic, but it's okay because both of these guys are rentals and they're both coming from situations where the teams they were on prior were not really all too great. So you could say, okay, it took them a while to get their feet going under them again. And besides, Reviews have been pretty good when it comes to these two guys and how they've performed with the Rangers. I've seen a lot of people kind of praising Tarasenko more so than Patrick Kane, because Patrick Kane is 35 years old, he's a lot older, and he's not really what he used to be, but when it comes to the long-term projectability here, and I say long-term, but the guy, as we said, he's 35, so it's not really like he's got too much of a long-term future ahead of him in the National Hockey League, but for as long as Patty Kane is able to still play hockey, he'll probably find himself jobs wherever it is, whether that's with the Rangers or without. Still, though, we have a lot of people talking about Kane and the playmaking, how the passing in his game is still elite, how he's able to find just random guys all over the ice that you didn't think were actual passing lanes. He's able to zip it across and allow his team to make new scoring chances from chances where you don't really think anything is there. Kane just still has such a pristine understanding and ability to create plays that he is a valuable asset. Sure, he's making $10.5 million a season as an AAV, but that ends off this upcoming offseason. And so, with the idea of Patrick Kane in mind, let's head over onto an article on NHL.com. Take a look at this. Patrick Kane talks about being comfortable after his trade to the Rangers in a Q&A with NHL.com. The forward has also discussed rediscovering winning feeling after 16 years with the Blackhawks. This article was published yesterday. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and read it. But essentially, Kane goes out there and talks about his transition from Chicago to New York, how he's feeling about it. And I think a lot of these quotes illuminate some pretty nice ideas here, so let's go out there and read what he has to say. I would say I'm comfortable, Kane told NHL.com after a brief morning skate at MSG. After the first four or five games, I felt like I was getting somewhere, and now it's kind of at a place where you're in the mode of feeling that you should still try to take over. I know the Rangers have had a lot of success here, so I'm viewing these 21 games to just get myself settled in, figure out the way I need to do things, and figure out the way I need to play, and then make sure everything is dialed once the playoffs start. This is going to be a weird question, and I think I know the answer, but I'm still curious to hear your thoughts, Dan Rosen asks. How badly do you want to win? I asked that because it happened in 2015, and it went steadily down in Chicago to where the Blackhawks are now. How badly do you want this currently? Kane says, oh yeah, I know. It's almost like two portions of your career, right? You come up, you're young, and you have so much success to start, and then all of a sudden, the last six or seven years, we were just fighting it, and trying to find a way to get back into the playoffs. So now this is a great opportunity, a great chance to come into a new team, and just to get that winning feeling again would be amazing. Even here, in the regular season, it's just such a breath of fresh air, from grinding every day to just win a game to get that good feeling. It's something I'm not taking for granted. Does winning here feel like it's expected, whereas before you left Chicago, it almost felt like winning should be celebrated? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you win games here with the Rangers, and you can tell even though you won, maybe you didn't play as well as you could have, or you should have, and people are angry about that. We used to have that feeling in Chicago, too. We'd come in, and we'd be up 2 nothing, and everyone would feel like we played brutal, and we'd be all angry. Now it's a similar vibe with the Rangers. We beat Carolina, and guys are just like, we won, great, but we should have played a lot better. It's good to have that feeling, too. 
He also talks about feeling settled in. He says definitely he feels settled. It's little things like having a nice place to live, knowing how to get to and from the practice rink, what's to be expected on a team plane or how they do things at their hotels, the meetings. It's all things like that. You get into a routine for 16 years with things you're so used to, so accustomed to, that you don't really have to think about. Then you come here and all of a sudden you have to think about it, like how you're going to do your pre-game warm-up or where you're going to do it or what you're going to need from trainers. It's all things like that. They may not seem like meaningful things, but they're things you have to dial in to have a routine. There are a few other questions and long, very detailed answers from Patrick Kane talking about the differences in Chicago and New York, etc., etc., but pretty much, based off of everything Patrick Kane has been talking about, he's gotten himself pretty accustomed to being a Ranger. And as we had talked about, that point production is pretty alright, too. I mean, 10 points in 16 games isn't amazing if you do the math. Okay, 10 divvy 16 multiplied out by 82, that's a 51-point pace. Definitely not the 90 points that he had last year when he was dishing all those pucks out to Alex Dabrinkit, but we all kind of know that because the playmaking is still there and it's still so pristine, one may wonder, okay, let's say hypothetically the Rangers re-sign Kane. Let's say he takes a huge discount to come back to New York because he wanted to go to New York and that was the only team he would want to get a trade to, so there's reason to believe that if he would want to stick around for next season, he'd probably take the money necessary to do that, but of course, that's just my perspective. It's not really anything that's worth listening to. If Kane comes back to New York on, let's say, a three-ish million dollar deal or whatever, 3.5, maybe even a bit lower than that, who knows? What is the potential if you give Kane a full season and you line him alongside of a guy like Artemi Panarin, for example? The Rangers currently, if you look at their lines and you see where everybody is, Daily Faceoff has Patrick Kane listed as that first line center, or not center, excuse me, right wing with Zabanajad and Kreider. If you wanted to try to put everything together and have that top six scrambled around, if you wanted to try Panarin and Kane with each other once more, how would that work? How would it look for a full 82-game season having both of these guys together once more? You could probably keep the rest of the lineup the way it is. You could keep that kid line, assuming everybody gets re-signed and is already good, which I get it, that's probably the first priority for the Rangers. You probably shouldn't be trying to re-sign Patrick Kane over Capo Caco. But if there is a reality where Kane decides to come back and everything works out, not gonna lie, I am curious as to seeing how Kane could play on a team like the Rangers, where he is not technically the number one guy anymore. Where he doesn't need to be dishing it out to Alex Dabrink at every other power play to get points. Where he could dish it out to multiple guys, he could dish it out to Mika, he could dish it out to Panarin, or whatever. Like, there are options here on the Rangers that allow him to play a role where he's not really been used to playing for the past 10 years, pretty much. So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Patrick Kane and the idea of him re-signing with the Rangers. It isn't really anything that had been discussed, like, oh, he's wanting to do it or whatever. I'm just kind of bringing up the idea because I've been seeing a lot of Rangers fans talking about it in my timeline. But if you are a fan of the Big Apple, then hey, what are your thoughts on Kane, how he's performed so far, whether or not you think he could re-sign, and if you had to choose one, Tarasenko or Patty Kane, which one would you want your Rangers team to re-sign more? That's another discussion I feel like we could have, but we are kind of running out of time on the gameplay, so I'm going to leave you here tonight with that. Thoughts in the comments section below about Patty Kane in this future with the Rangers. I hope you enjoyed this video. Rolls 99. And bye. <laughs>